Hi YouTubers, welcome back to Sailing and Electronics. Today we're going to discuss or we're going to review actually the Lito Kala Engineer Ally 500. This is um, a charger for lithium ion cells, also uh, nickel uh, metal hydrate cells and for different sizes. I used to uh, own and use a lot of uh, Opus chargers, as you maybe have seen also the review I made a couple of years ago. But I had six of them and all six started to wear out. Uh, I lost one slot, then another slot. So in the end I only had two or one slots uh, per charger. And that was actually too uh, little to do what I want to do. So. I was looking at buying the Opus charger again, but uh, it's actually quite pricey. Uh, it's about 30 to 35 euro. Um, I found out that the Lito Kala was actually only 18 euro. So I uh, said, okay, I'm just gonna try one. I bought this one. I'm uh, testing it for now for a couple of weeks and I have seen that the results are very good. So I already ordered a second one. So what is actually special about this? Uh, nothing really. The prices, that is special, 18 euro. But on the other hand, it can do actually the same things as the Opus uh, charger can do. So um, for me that's important, that we can not only charge the batteries, but that we can run a cycle through it so we can uh, have a battery, for example, at 3.2 volts, we charge it to 4.2 volts, then we discharge it at a rate of one amp, and we charge it again to 4.2 volts again. This is only done by uh, one setting, so I don't have to intervene, and that makes sure that um, I know what is the capacity of the battery after let's say 8 to 10 hours uh, um, depending on the size of the battery. Let's have a closer look um, on the charger. As you can see we have four slots. We have uh, an LCD screen. We have four buttons on this side. Two main buttons on the lower side. Here we have the connection of the connector for the 12 volt DC and we also have a 5 volt USB output. This 5 volt USB output cannot be used when it is connected to the mains but you can use it when for example you put in four cells then this is actually a power bank for your USB. Another point that's uh, interesting to know is that the battery cells themselves they are not going in like this with the positive side on top like in the Opus and a lot of other chargers but here you have to turn them around and the positive side has to face downwards so the negative side you, pre you press against the slip, you push it back and you put it in. So positive, negative. As you can see the display is showing that the USB is now uh, capable. So now you would be able to put in something to charge, for example your phone. When you put on current you will see that LCD display shows up again and it shows that in port 1 I have 3.85 volts in the cell. Um, here will come the milliamp hours, the capacity of the battery and here uh, the time uh, which it has taken to charge or to discharge. The internal uh, resistance is also shown here. 
But um, to be honest, this value is better than with the Opus. With the Opus, you can also give an internal resistance uh, or do an internal resistance check, but it did not really uh, come out very good. So if I do this again, 22, if I do this again, 22. If I take another slot, 30, another slot, 25, this slot again where it was 30, 28. So you can see this changes a little bit, but within a certain range. Um, as you also may have seen my other video about measuring the internal resistance with another device, um, I also explained why it's important to have your cell below a certain value. It's about uh, all cells which are lower than 50. Uh, you can be pretty sure that these are in good conditions. Um, if you have cells which are going above 100, I would not recommend putting them in, in a, a power wall. Uh, if the internal resistance is too high, just don't use it. As you have seen here, uh, it variates about 5 to 10 um, points. That is not that uh, important. Yeah? If the average is about uh, the value that you see, then it's okay. So <clears throat> you have seen that I have put in 18650 cells. Here I have an 8350 cell. Also this cell will go in there. As you see, it already shows 3.69 volt. Um, so this functions. Uh, this is just a regular AA battery. Um, I'm just showing you that the size is working. This is a non-charging IKEA battery. So this cannot go in there for charging. So this is just for uh, showing you that the AA will work also. In slot 3 you will see 1.34 volts charging but as I said this is a regular uh, disposable battery so I will take it out. It was just to show you. I have also uh, this big brother 22650 cell. Also this one is going inside and it shows the reading in slot 4, 4.18 volts so that's also working. So you have seen AA batteries will work, AAA batteries will work, 18650 cells will work, 18350 and 22650 cell will work. So it's a complete variation of lithium ion cells and nickel metal hydrate um, cells that will work. So um, it's a very uh, convenient charger for all your batteries you have in the house. For the people who are mainly interested in the 18650 batteries to build a power wall, I will demonstrate you what you can do. So first of all, when you put it in there, you will see slot one and charging is blinking. When you put the mode button, sorry, that's too late. You have about eight seconds to press on it. So if you insert again, you will see it blinking charge. You can go to fast test and normal test. And you can here see that it current is 500, 700 milliamps, 1000 milliamp, 300 milliamp, 500 milliamp. 500 milliamp is the, is the default, but for us, we are um, doing this at 1000 milliamps or one amp, just to be sure that all the batteries we are testing are tested in the same way. So we can put another one in there. It will jump to slot two automatically. If we want to go to normal test at a rate of 1000 you do it like this 
when it stops blinking, you will see that uh, it is locked. But now it's only programmed for slot 2. As you can see, slot 1 is only charging. We'll do the same for slot 3. Mode to normal test, 1000 milliamps. Slot 4, normal test, 1000 milliamp. The problem what this uh, charger has and what the Opus did not have, the Opus had the capability of, let's say, putting four cells in there um, and then giving them the same program at the same time. This is not working once the cells are inside. Yeah? Or you have to put the cells inside all together and then you have eight seconds to, uh, to program them all in one. Actually, what I do is I just put them in. I unplug this. The screen goes out. I replug it. Then, when he says, okay, um, the screen is on, I go to the program I want, in this case normal test, I go to the current I want, in this case one amp, and I just wait. And then when you press slot 1, you have the correct settings, slot 2 the correct settings, slot 3 the correct settings, slot 4 the correct settings. So this way you uh, are able to program in one time. If you say, okay, no, now I want uh, for slot two something else, you just push button two, you keep pushing the mode uh, button, so it blinks, and now you can change, okay, no, I want to charge, or I want to fast charge, or normal test. But what actually are the differences? Charging is, as the word suggests, just charging it. I'm going to double a long press, then click again so it's on fast test. Now it will drain the cells to 3 volts. So it will start here at 3.90 as it was. It will drain the cells until 3 volts and then say, okay, the capacity of this cell is this amount of milliamp hour. Of course, this is not the way we want to do it. We want the cells to be uh, completely charged first and then measure the capacity. So what do we have to do? Press mode again, go to the program normal test. If we say, okay, normal test can run at one amp. Yes, as it starts now, it will charge from the current state to 4.2 volts. If it's 4.2 volt, it will discharge until 3 volt. Then you will see here the amount of milliamp hour that is in the cell. And it will also automatically charge again to 4.2 volt. That way you have cycled the complete cell and you know what is the capacity inside. If you do that for all your cells, you will put in your power wall on the same way, I mean with the one amp hour, um, then you are sure that the batteries are measured in the same way. So this review about the Lito Kala Engineer LI500, it's a, a mouthful. Um, for me, it's a great charger at a great price. I ordered my second one after using this for a couple of weeks. Um, I think it can be easily replacing the Opus charger at uh, almost half the price. I don't know yet how long they will last. With the Opus charger, I can say that maybe I did uh, four to 500 charges and discharges uh, per slot per charger. 
um, that's not uh, not too little but also for that money uh, if this charger can do the same thing why wouldn't i buy this one um, i hope you like this video uh, interesting if you did so please give me a thumbs up and also su subscribe to my channel if you would like more info about the opus charger then you can see also my other review about the opus charger thank you very much see you next time bye